The Golden State Warriors are now 6-1 and one and second in the Western Conference. And they are not just, you know, winning games. They are kicking ass in all the things that usually make a championship team a championship team. They are third in points per game at 121.6, but they are second on defense in points allowed at 104.3. They are also second in point differential. They are winning games by an average of 17.2 points. But the Golden State Warriors have just come out and blitzed people with strength in numbers, with 13 guys playing 10 minutes, with youth, with exuberance, with no ego, with unselfishness, and uh, Buddy Heald surprising people, and Moses Moody surprising. But they've really come out and blitzed everybody, and it's been a lot of fun to watch because, dude, this team's pretty damn good. When you're third in the league in points, and you're second in points allowed, and you're second in point differential, and you're first in rebounds, and you're fourth in blocks... Dude, those are not just kind of little numbers. When you're top five in both categories, that means you have a championship roster. I think the Golden State Warriors might actually have a championship roster. The big dilemma, should we still pull the trigger if it's possible and go get Giannis out of the Kumpo? Now, I think a lot of people are going to be like, uh, duh. But but hear me out here. In case y'all have missed on the other side, the Milwaukee Bucks are currently a shit show. The Milwaukee Bucks are 1-6 and six and dead last in the Eastern Conference. The Milwaukee Bucks suck out loud. So the rumor mill is really picked up. A lot of people are saying like, oh, Giannis can go here, Giannis can go there. Matter of fact, it's not just the Warriors that are in that discussion. It's also been the Knicks, the Nets, the Heat. I've heard the Rockets now throw their name in the hat. Is this something that you should try to stay put with and see if it works? Or is this whole thing, you know, looking at it saying, hey, we got a lot of B players. We need another star to put next to Steph. Let's put Giannis next to Steph. Steph. The latest mock trade, Jonathan Kaminga, Brandon Pajemski, Andrew Wiggins, along with Kyle Anderson, Lindy Waters, and a couple first-round picks. These are the three guys I personally, I don't know as you as a Warriors fan, I would miss the least. I mean, putting him with Steph Curry, dude, that would be phenomenal. If we can keep some of the roster in that proposed trade, we would still have some talent around them to work with. Curry, Melton, Moody, Heald, Peyton at two, Giannis at small forward, Dre and Trace power forward, Looney center, and kind of rotate those guys around. I mean, look at this dude, man. Can you imagine the pick and rolls with Steph and Giannis now that they're utilizing the pick and roll with Steph Curry more? Oh, that's Giannis out of the Kumpo, man. I think we've forgotten because Milwaukee sucks and it's a small market. That's the freaking Greek freak, and I don't know what to do. They've not just exceeded even my expectations. They've exceeded everyone's expectations. The Warriors have almost too many good players. The Warriors have come out to play. Now hit the video here for me, Mateo. This is a golden dilemma. I don't know what to do with this team because the Golden State Warriors are now 6-1 and one and second in the Western Conference. And they are not just, you know, winning games. They are kicking ass in all the things that usually make a championship team a championship team. They are third in points per game at 121.6, but they are second on defense in points allowed at 104.3. They are also second in point differential. They are winning games by an average of 17.2 points. They are also first in rebounds, something I'm not used to saying with Golden State. They are fourth in blocks in the league, which I'm not used to saying with Golden State. They are back to what I have always loved about them, the strength in numbers, but even more than other seasons. I mean, they currently have 13 players on the roster. 13 Warriors are averaging at least 10 minutes per game, and eight of them are averaging at least nine points or more per game. A lot of people have talked about Buddy Heald, and of course, he's been a big surprise, and he's been wonderful, 21.9 points, shooting 50% from threes in the first seven games, even though he's taken 9.4 attempts. As you can see, I think they're going to put a Heald bomb up there in a second. Moody's been averaging 10.6 and 49% threes with 4.7 attempts. Steph Curry, who's only played in, I believe, four of the seven so far, is averaging 19.8, 6.5. He's actually caught off to a kind of easy start. Hasn't had to play that much. He's got to set a lot of fourth quarters. And the only thing I've noticed with Steph that I like is they are using the pick and roll. But the Golden State Warriors have just come out and blitzed people with strength in numbers, with 13 guys playing 10 minutes, with youth, with exuberance, with no ego, with unselfishness, and uh, Buddy Heald surprising people, and Moses Moody surprising people. But they've really come out and blitzed everybody, and it's been a lot of fun to watch. So I'm kind of stuck because I was looking around thinking, you know, these guys are good, but they, they, they could use maybe a big trade, which I'll get to in a second. I think there's a big one out there. But after seven games and watching them, I don't know what to say anymore because, dude, this team's pretty damn good. When you're third in the league in points and you're second in points allowed and you're second in point differential and you're first in rebounds and you're fourth in blocks, 
Dude, those are not just kind of little numbers. Those are things, when you're top five in both categories, that means you have a championship roster. I think the Golden State Warriors might actually have a championship roster. Now, it's very Steph-heavy, and there's no argument there. I mean, uh, but I mean, it wouldn't be like, a, you know, the Mavericks without Luka or the Nuggets without Jokic. Maybe it's a little bit more than others. I don't know, because they've won three without them. Now, the big test is going to come up in this next week. This is going to be a big week for the Golden State Warriors. They have the Thunder, they have the Celtics, and they have the Cavaliers, the three other best teams in the league record-wise, all on the road, and I think they have a combined record currently 25-1. and That's going to be a huge test for Golden State. But the big question, as all this happens, and I guess we'll find out more because of the schedule this week, I am going to be very curious, and other Warriors fans, you should be too, if you could pop this up here for me. The big dilemma, should we still pull the trigger if it's possible and go get Giannis out of the Kumpo? Now, I think a lot of people are going to be like, uh, duh, but, but hear me out here because here's what's going to happen. So in case y'all have missed on the other side, the Milwaukee Bucks are currently a shit show. The Milwaukee Bucks, who actually had some expectations this year, of course, with Damian Lillard and their second year, are 1-6 and six and dead last in the Eastern Conference. The Milwaukee Bucks suck out loud, and it has been, you know, talked about and discussed for a long time. If Giannis doesn't start seeing results quickly, he's going to want his way out of there. So the rumor mill has really picked up. A lot of people are saying, like, oh, Giannis can go here, Giannis can go there. Matter of fact, it's not just the Warriors that are in that discussion. It's also been the Knicks, the Nets, the Heat. I've heard the Rockets now throw their name in the hat. There's been a lot of different teams out there. But the bigger question for me right now is as I watch a team that's 6-1 and one, and I watch a team that's top five in a lot of major categories and with this, you know, bench unit and everybody else and all these, you know, names that a lot of people don't expect to play well, even guys like Lindy Waters and others coming up and surprising people, is this something that you should try to stay put with and see if it works or is this whole thing, you know, looking at it saying, hey, we got a lot of B players, we need another star to put next to Steph, let's put Giannis next to Steph. I still lean that way, but man, I'm shocked how much I am now hesitant to want to do it, which is pretty fascinating as a longtime Warriors fan and somebody who's wanted to see an athletic seven-footer here for so god dang long. Giannis would fit that role so god dang well. And, you know, even the trade, even what I've seen is the rumored mock trade, as I think some of y'all like me that are Warriors fans look this stuff up. The latest mock trade is oh, those three guys in the middle there, Jonathan Kaminga, Brandon Pajemski, Andrew Wiggins, along with Kyle Anderson, Lindy Waters, and a couple first-round picks is a projected trade that could make sense for both sides. I think Milwaukee, well, they get some first-round picks there. These are the three guys I personally, I don't know as you as a Warriors fan, I would miss the least. I'm sorry, for a long time I've been telling you, I think Brandon Pajemski is horribly overrated. Yes, I know he's plus-minus. Oh, it's plus minus. You'll love his plus minus. I think he's a backup point guard on a championship contender at best. And currently he's the only guy on the Warriors not playing well. Matter of fact, shooting 18.2% from threes. We have a log jam at two guard. There's a lot of people we can play at two in Golden State. You have Melton, you have Moody, you have Heald. We got Peyton. We got a lot of people that we could still keep on this roster that could let Brandon go. Wiggins, dude, I'm sorry. I mean, you're just as bad as Ben Simmons to me with the mental health. Sounds like you have mental health. I know, man. family, his dad, and everything. I know the story, but I mean, dude, even before, you know, the thing with his dad, then he wanted to sit out for a while because he didn't want to take the COVID shot. Then he's always seeming sick. You know, there's always some reason he's in and out. He doesn't seem to be mentally focused in the game, as talented as he is. If we can move him, I wouldn't be upset. And then Jonathan Kaminga is good. He is probably two years away, but he is currently inconsistent as hell. So if we can get up in this mock trade that has been proposed and again not my proposal i've read it from insiders and uh guys like you know on espn or whatever they said this is actually something they think might go down where it's going to be kaminga pajemski andrew wiggins kyle anderson lindy waters and two first round picks for Giannis. i mean i want to just scream hell yes and call it a night but they are playing well and I am enjoying what I'm seeing. I mean, the fact is, going 13 deep with not just the big names, the Heels and Currys and Wiggins, but guys like Trace Jackson Davis and DeAnthony Melton and Kevon Looney and Gary Payton II. You know, I'm enjoying seeing this kind of, again, strength in numbers, you know, situation that they used to do and they used to be successful at with Steph at the helm. But then the other part of me says, Brent, you're freaking crazy. It's Giannis Adetokounmpo. Hit this last video for me here. I mean, dude, if we only have to give up those three guys, Wiggins, Pajemski, and Kaminga, and Waters, and Anderson, and some picks for that? For this? 
What am I thinking? I mean, dude, it's Giannis out of the Kumpo, man. Yes, the Bucks are one and six, and yes, Giannis hasn't played in 80 games or even 70 games, I believe, in the last three seasons. But dude, he's still 30 points, 11 rebounds, six assists, a block and a steal per game. He's a former NBA champion and MVP. He is the Greek freak. I mean, putting him with Steph Curry, dude, that would be phenomenal. If we can keep some of the roster in that proposed trade, we would still have some talent around them to work with. Curry, Melton, Moody, Heald, Peyton at two, Giannis at small forward, Dre and Trace, power forward, Looney center, and kind of rotate those guys around. I mean, look at this dude, man. Can you imagine the pick and rolls with Steph and Giannis now that they're utilizing the pick and roll with Steph Curry more? Oh, that's Giannis out of the Kumpo, man. I think we've forgotten because Milwaukee sucks and it's a small market. That's the freaking Greek freak. They're, they're one is, I think Giannis is going to want his way out of there this year. And the more I watch, I almost forget just how athletic he is. The Warriors have never had a seven-footer like him. We could really use a seven-footer like him as much as I love Trace Jackson Davis. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at the Greek freak go. Yeah, we might have to go ahead and do that, dog. Yeah, I'm sorry. Forget everything I just said. I'll t I tell you what, watching the highlights, I'll give you Kaminga, Pajemski, Wiggins, Anderson, Waters, and a couple second-round picks for that dude. We'll go ahead and call it a day. Warriors would definitely have at least a two-, three-year window, Steph's last year's, to win one more title, which would also be beautiful because then you'd have five rings, which would be more than LeBron's four, and I could tell you all to stick it. I do have to tell you all goodbye because it's time. Got to go. Talk to you next time.